Welcome to Carrier Command 2. My name is Daz Tactic and welcome to this episode and this, this series. In this one, we're just going to be having a quick look around the bridge. Now, at the moment, everything is turned off. The power is gone. Not gone, it's just off at this stage. And we're still actually in the dry dock and we're still on the slipway. So we have to get off the slipway. So we'll do that this episode and we'll just go through and have a brief introduction as to what all the different stations are, what their roles are, without going into any great depth. And so if you're playing the game, this game shines as a multiplayer game where you can have different people uh, actually manning these various seats and doing different things. But let's just get the power turned on so we can see what's what. This is the main light switch, just sort of turns the lights on around the uh, around the captain's seat so the captain sits back over here the first thing we want to do is just turn on the power the main power this turns on the helm and also the damage control but let's just talk a little bit more about that in just a minute so we've got the helm i'm going to then take the helm which then allows me to click on this screen here and deploy the carrier i'm just going to quickly press escape and we'll just watch as we go down the slipway into the water so we've now launched, yay, there we go. So our carrier is launched. We're now uh, off the slipway and ready for action. Now we don't ever come back to the slipway. This is like the first, this is the maiden voyage of whatever this carrier is actually called. You'll notice that everything has now lit up. So we now have access to everywhere. So let's just talk briefly about what each actual station does. You've, uh, the main thing with the captain's seat, and if I just click on a seat, we'll then sort of take us in here. The main thing is this hollow map. And what this is, it's a 3D representation of the world. And uh, you'll notice in the bottom left corner all the time, there is always information about what to do. And so if I want to see, this is the other island that would be controlled by the, by the AI, but because we set up the game to be a, a human multiplayer game, that won't play a role. But that is, that is the enemy island, not that it really matters that much. Now, to sort of do bearings, what it does is it gives you a distance and a direction. So if I hover there, just press the E and just move across. So that there is 172 kilometers away to get to that particular island at 40, 48 degrees. But the main thing about this is really just on a more tactical sort of level, as we start to zoom in on these islands, we start to get more information. And so we can sort of see through here that we've got like, um, we've got Bell Tempest, for example, is like is a almost like it's it's essentially like a factory for aircraft and it's got a defense of two now i did set the game up with two shields and your initial ones should only be one shield but that's that's set up for two shields back over here we've got another two shield with fuel fuel is really vitally important that would tend to be the one that we would go after back over through this side and so on and so forth and we'll sort of see that some of these will then get more beyond the two they've got the three we've got fours in the middle here so we've got a few quite difficult ones in the in the center and each of these have got different abilities that they then go and do and so uh, th this is great for just double checking what's actually going on and, and just getting your basic strategy right so if you're playing as the captain you tend to give the orders and you tend to be either pressing escape and then having a bit of a look around at what the others are doing while you're sitting in your chair and then going back into the hollow map to, to have a much more detailed look because this is not really you're not you're not you ha you, this is your superficial you know which target should we go for should we go for the airplanes or should we go for the um for the fuel uh, and so these and if i zoom in on e in even more this one will probably be able to see the actual layout no not quite close enough to be able to see the actual layout of the maps i'm sure we won't see this one either so these are these are procedurally generated islands uh with uh, and with random uh, results in here so, so every time you play the game there'll be different opportunities it's really quite interesting so anyway we're not close enough to either one of these I think for this series we'll just take over one island as an example and we'll probably just do this one because it's the closest okay so that's sort of where we are and this is just showing us actually we can see it here like it, we're not getting in, in a bit closer this is the island that we control so this is our island there's the aircraft carrier that's just gone off the slipway um, this is called Outpost, this particular island, and it's a warehouse. So that's all that we actually have at this particular location. Uh, we've got a barge over here, and this is how we get our supplies. But this is, so you can actually, a lot of the game will be spent in very, very close proximity to what you're doing to try to sort of figure out what to do. So if you are playing a multiplayer game and you are the captain, quite often you'll be looking at what's going on through here. You might be sort of getting up out of your chair and moving around because that will stay there the whole time. So you can be there just sort of helping either taking, helping people at their stations or doing whatever else you need to do. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the objectives that we sort of saw there. Um, and you can click, I can be over here and then just click into here and we'll quickly go to the seat and then we can sort of start to zoom bit in and out again with whatever we, we want to be able to do. So we'll, um, we'll have a look at this in just a minute. Just press escape and then out of the chair, escape again. This station here is your logistics stations. And so there's a few different things. There's two, two chairs here, two pilot seats. So you can actually have two players playing here. Either side really has got the same as the other side. The only thing that's different are the two screens at the top. One just gives me a log of my deliveries and the other one over through here gives me what my income actually is. So I make income over time. So the longer I delay, the more money I make. <laughs> <laughs> but also, the, if I can actually capture islands, I get more money. If I can kill off enemy vehicles, I get more money that way as well. And so we can use this to then go and buy things. So at the moment, we've got 104 uh, credits. I suppose just call it that for now. And um, and so I'm sitting now in this pilot seat. And so I can look at all of these whenever I feel like it. Uh, over through here, actually, I might talk. I'll talk here first. This is where you do the vehicle loadouts. Now, in the last episode, I went down into the flight deck and also into where the vehicles were as well. And if I click on this one, I can actually then, this is just a, a graphic representation of where they actually are. Now, we want to change a few things. I showed you that before that they had loadouts that I'm not 100% happy with. I'm thinking I'll probably end up using the helicopters with chain guns, and I'll probably just use them to try to take out low-level scout units on the ground. So I want to be getting rid of all of my all of my air threats before I start to send these in. So I can just go in. They've got two missiles at the moment in their loadout. I'm just going to go and click on one of these, and we're just going to go back through. Now the numbers down here are how many I actually have in stock of the actual uh, of the actual either missiles or um, or turrets. And if I just go back across, the very first one I've got four chain guns or auto guns down through here with 20,000 ammunition for these. So I've got a lot of ammunition. So I'm going to throw that one onto there, and we'll see that this will start to encroach across. At the moment it's at 53, I'll change that one as well, go back. And so the robots down below are now starting to put these onto that particular razor bill. That was A3, we'll do the same with A4 as an example. I'll just get these set up. So we'll get those on. Now we're down to zero with these, uh, so we'll just move them out. Now, also with these AWACs or the albatrosses that we actually have, they've got chain guns in here, and I don't want them to have chain guns. What I prefer them to have would be to have, like, if just in case they run into troubles, I think I'd prefer to have, uh, where is it, the anti-air missiles. So we'll grab those instead and um, probably go with anti-air missiles all the way through with these. Actually, no, I'll keep this. We've got infrared missiles so these over through here are infrared like if i click on those infrared missiles that's fine so i'll keep them on and again these guys just need to get these now changed over as well let's just do the same one into here so we'll get rid of those there's all sorts of other things as well like there's um i think we've got extra fuel tanks i've got, got torpedoes if there's if there's ships we can use uh, different sorts of torpedoes in there in there as well uh tv missiles i thought there was fuel external fuel tanks so I can put on extra fuel if I if I wanted to but uh, we'll just go back with um, where was it uh, anti-air missiles um, there we go and the same one into here because I'm thinking that that's the most likely one that we'd have to then go and use so they'll just they'll just now go ahead and slowly and you can see there that's the line of of how much of the fit out they've actually done by the way when I click on these ones you've got like um, uh, you've got the, the the health, the fuel, and then the loadout in through there. Anyway, I shouldn't I shouldn't be agonising over this. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to look at other things. I'll just take that seat again. So that's the loadouts. This screen over here is is essentially our um, our stock levels. Now the stock levels are either at either factories or the warehouse, and you can see there that the actually let's just go to one of the important ones. What have we got? We've got the ammo. Now we've got 20,000 of that 20 millimeter ammo that we actually had put on with the chain gun onto the helicopters. We've got 20,000 of that on the, it says carrier stock. It's in the carrier. We also have another 20,000 in storage in the warehouse just behind us. And so we can actually go and ask for that to be brought across. I won't show you that in this episode, but that's what this actually does work out at. Now the map is really, really important. This is actually where we get to see 
what we are likely to pick up. Now we saw before on the in the Captain's Hollow map that we had like a, a much higher representation of the actual islands. We can hover over this and see what we're likely to get. And so this air chassis, we're going to be picking up like a stealth fighter bomber uh, to be able to then build that at that location if we took that one over. Fuel is just fuel, that's okay. Uh, this one in through here, we don't get anything extra, so we'd just be able to get ba build the basic scout uh, craft at that location. This is a very important one typically, and this one in particular is very important because you can see there in the middle there's, there's one that's there's a blueprint that's that's locked at the moment that we can unlock from here, which is a 160. That 160 millimeter uh, ammunition that we have is actually our main deck gun ammunition, and so this getting that is vitally important that we get get hold of that as well. So. Looking for the 160 is, is a very, very important thing. We've got uh, turrets in through here as well, different turrets that can fire different sorts of munitions. It's all very well having 120 millimeter am munitions uh, that you can sort of use in anything, but if you don't have a 120 millimeter turret, it's, it's actually fairly pointless. So you, do, you need a bit of a combination of the, of the both. That's another one that doesn't have anything. That one's got a, what's called a bear, which is like a heavy, a, a heavy unit. Um, this one over through here also doesn't have anything. Um, this has got barges, this has got uh, utilities like different cameras and things like that which is not really all that valuable. Some of the flight ones will be good. That one's got the, uh, the called a, it's called a petrol which is a um, like a transport chopper. Uh, that one's there, it's got actually <laughs> that one's got the petrol, the, um, the fighter bomber and also the albatross uh, in there in its blueprint. So that's the blueprints in through that side, very very useful. Then we've got the barges and what they're actually carrying. So when we sort of set up a barge, I can do that with, from this location. So that's the island with the barge. And so if we had orders that we had requisitioned to go to the carrier, that's the carrier there, I can click on the barge and then set up waypoints and, and move him to start to maneuver and bring things across to the, um, to the actual aircraft carrier. Anyway, we'll just press escape and get out of there. Might just put this one back to stop mode. Uh, I tend to use stop mode there so I can glance across if it, I don't really need to glance across here but this one I do tend to actually have in a little bit closer just so I can see the icons around me so I can just quickly glance, glance over at that one there alright so that's just going to give me a very very quick rundown um, you know at, uh, I can be back over here and have a quick look and sort of see what's what uh, at, a, at a glance there that, so that's, this is logistics um, this one through here, and I won't spend too much time with this. This is actually the damage control, and also the fuel in the actual in the uh, in the in the vessel. And it's now night time, so we're, I'm spending my time <laughs> going through. But it doesn't matter because we're making money. We're making money for each day that goes past. I'm making more and more money. Um, just press escape again. Um, so. This is damage control. So up the top here, so we've got like a bit of an indication down through this side. This is damage control up the top here with all the different components on the ship. And so um, you can see there we've got like, if I just click on that one through there, we've got weapons on the, on, like on the, on the surface of the, like on the outside area. And as I hover over each one of these, we then do get like the, um, is it weapons or something different? I think it is like weapon areas. I think it's weapon areas on the actual sh uh, ship itself. There's the bridge where we are, and so these can take damage if we if we get you know if we sort of uh, if if we either run aground, uh, we can take damage particularly to the hull, which is the, this number down in the bottom here, or we can take damage to components on the ship itself, which can then make us susceptible to take even more damage if if someone's actually attacking us. Uh, so we can go and actually f repair one by one these different components, including the hull. So that's actually just where repairs and damage status is. That's only really important if we do take damage. Uh, we've got damage in through that side. Back over in this seat, we are looking at power. So we can just click on into here. So we've got, look, there's different components on the ship that require power. And we've got a set amount of power. And if we use too much, it then drains it from everything else. So we have to be a little bit careful. At the moment, we're only using it on radar because we're not really moving anywhere. This is my overriding uh, like we saw there when we started the game that we went to the uh, main breaker and just turned it on for everything and so that's sort of where we are there with with that particular one we've got breaker weapons in through there breaker repairs and propulsion so these just turn off like if we wanted to stop the radar for example we can just go to that one power drains off from there we've just turned it off off there it's also gets turned off uh, here so there's now offline 
but that's a fairly important system. So if we turn it back on, radar is now working again. <laughs> okay, next thing is the helm. I'll come back to that one in the next episode when we start to um, start to prepare what we're going to be doing. And uh, over through here is the weapon systems. This is a very, very important station where we can use the weapons of the carrier itself. We've got different weapon mounts sort of located around the carrier in different positions. And so there's a lot of stuff that we can actually do from this system here. This is going to take a, a bit of time just to explain how it works. It's not super difficult, but it is important to sort of know how things work. Some of the things work automatically, like these uh, Seawiz, uh, the Seawiz uh, systems, which are like machine guns that can be just automatically turned on. And anything that flies towards the ship that's not one of ours, like not one of our, one of, not one of our aircraft will be shot down by these things automatically we don't have to actually arm them so if you're playing solo mode these are your best friend because um, they're going to stop a lot of stuff coming in and to turn them on all you do is just flick these things up and um, essentially they're now armed and ready to go so uh, and then when we turn that on it will then appear over here this is the seawiz system showing us how many bullets we actually have in each system uh, that it is actually armed now if there's I think it'll show this if it, if it finds that there's a target like let's just say there's a, a missile coming in against us and it's going to try to take it down it will then I think it'll then say target or targeted in, in that particular one through there you'll see that other ones are off this is the anti-aircraft now these are manual so we don't want we won't bother turning them on until we need them but essentially you turn them on and it, this one you can't launch the missile until this changes from from green to white so i'll just keep, i'll just leave that one offline at this stage so that's they're both offline back over through here one of the main things you'll be using is your main gun this is the 160 millimeter gun at the at the front there and we've only got limited amount of uh, of um uh, ammo we've only got 20 in the gun itself but we do have a lot in stocks we've got like another 100 i think in stocks but we go through this one every shot every salvo that we fire from the from the uh, ship takes up five so just be aware of that one so it's armed and ready to go but we'll leave that one off until we've sort of you know got a got a reason for it we've got cruise missiles that can go as well and we've then got the flare launch as well that where we can sort of if something's coming in and we need to use countermeasures then that's a countermeasure We've then got our torpedo controls back in through this side. Again, I'll, I'll use them if we've got enemy ships that we need to sort of then go after. Uh, back over here, we've got like lights. So we've got like different sorts of um, runway lights. Like if we have a look at the um, at the edge lights, that just turns on the edge lights. If we go to the end lights, let's put lights at the end. And if we look at the back there, turn those on, they're now on as well. All right, so that's just your, that's just your lights in through that side. Uh, these are other lights. You've got like spotlights. So I've got a spotlight that then sort of shows something on the actual deck there. If I want to sort of say, hey, look at these, uh, look at the SeaWiz systems back over there. I can, actually that's up. What about right? Up. Not really sort of showing that one much. <laughs> anyway, you can move these things around on the deck. These are, like, there we go. We've sort of highlight, highlighted them now in this particular one. So that's just the lights in through there. But they do, I think they use a bit of power, but not very much. Um, up through here is your ship log, and so you can sort of see uh, crew joined DAS Tactics, so we joined the actual uh, thing itself. So anything that actually happens will be listed up through there. And uh, this is the holding pattern for the air traffic control. And so this is actually when, it, when we bring ships back or bring craft back to the, uh, the aircraft carrier, they circle the aircraft carrier, and then they come in and they land from the rear of the aircraft carrier. They take off from the front, but they land from the rear. Uh, this is a little, this is really cool. This is a CCTV of the downstairs. It's on auto, so it flicks between the, the two different decks. Uh, this is a real uh, throwback to the 1988 game. <laughs> I love it. It's really, really cool. Uh, this over through here is the elevator status, which is back over the, that side. And this here is the crane status as well. So we've got sort of like different different status to sort of so we can see what's going on with the actual ship itself. This is a really important station, and you'll probably spend most of your time in here. This is vehicle control, or pretty much where you're going to be running the, the actual combat from, whether it be uh, surface or air, and you can do any of them from either from any of these any of these three terminals. So three individual people can can play, play from this particular area, or you can whichever way you want to go. 
What I think we'll do is we will leave this here as a, as a brief summary then of the actual bridge itself. And so this is where if you're playing a multiplayer game, uh, you'll have different people maybe sort of doing multiple roles. Like you may have sort of like one person just like you tend not to be wanting to move away from this from this system because you like quite often if you've got the people to do it you're going to be wanting to have at least some craft in the in the air uh, at all times um helm you could possibly sort of shift the helm into into other roles this one this role here is really quite important um you probably if when you get close close to islands you can really use the two of these together if you've got multiple people that can then go and do that one and also someone to manage this is also really really quite critical now it may be you know depending on how many people you're playing with if you are playing multiplayer that you you know the captain may be able to come across and just quickly sort of go and uh, and set things up for the barges or whatever else you might want to do or have the person that's doing the um the combat come across and do the loadouts for the actual vehicles themselves but it's a very very cool multiplayer game in that sense uh, i'm just going to be playing it solo though in this particular run through so i'll leave it here guys in the next episode we're going to plan our mission and we're going to be scouting the enemy island and uh, figuring out exactly what we're going to then be doing thanks for watching i will catch you then